the entire global cryptocurrency market was worth $1.6 trillion by the end of July 2021. That's more than six times what the crypto market was worth in July of 2020. And it became very trendy on Wall Street to kind of trade in cryptocurrencies. And I think that that's really what the last 18 months have been about, that hype cycle. Bitcoin is now old money. I mean, you look at all of these altcoins. Now, I own Ethereum, and I, I think that I feel like you have to have exposure to Bitcoin, just like you have to have exposure to gold. It, it's a good reminder that the story is bigger than just Bitcoin. In fact, the current number of altcoins clocks in at more than 11,000 and counting. This includes Ether, USDC, and of course, Dogecoin. When Elon Musk showed Dogecoin on Saturday Night Live, I mean, that was the peak right there. You don't get any more hype than that. Bitcoin's dominance has fallen in the last five years. In December of 2016, Bitcoin dominated the crypto market, controlling 96% of the industry. Now, altcoins are taking up a larger and larger share. By the end of July 2021, Bitcoin made up less than half of the global crypto market. Crypto's renewed attention and volatility has caught the eye of government officials like U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. She's now pushing for regulators to police digital currencies, specifically the kind known as stablecoins. But with the number of altcoins growing in number and value, will it be too little too late? Here's how altcoins work. Altcoins are basically any cryptocurrency other than Bitcoin. Currently, there are more than 10,000 altcoins in the world. Altcoins are powered by blockchains. They can be traded, held as a store of value, used to pay for transaction fees, or incentivize miners. Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency, laid out the technological groundwork for many altcoins. Nicknamed digital gold, Bitcoin now primarily gets thought of as a store of value. Today, the price of Bitcoin influences the price of other altcoins, but other coins and their blockchains offer additional capabilities and flexibility, hence the need for altcoins. This is known as Bitcoin maximalism. And Bitcoin maximalism basically states that Bitcoin is the only blockchain that actually has value, and there's no use for blockchain other than Bitcoin. Most of the coins out there are either worthless or should be worthless or don't bring very much utility to the table. But, you know, 95% out of, let's say, 10, 20,000 coins that are out there, that means that there are thousands of coins that do have value and do have utility. Determining a coin's usefulness depends on a number of factors. So we asked a developer, a crypto trading exchange, a crypto asset manager, and an investor what they look for. Developers in general are extremely focused on blockchain technologies. We talk directly to customers, we try to understand what's, what they've been interested in and what they've seen. Uh, and then we go through our own internal process. What we look at is actually the technical capability. We try to understand the team, we try to understand uh, you know, what's actually live on the project. We try to make sure that the technology is actually working. The first mistake that people make is that they get hyper-focused on the technology. Which blockchain is a little bit faster than the other one? Which one is more efficient? Which one scales better? And they forget that in this market, size really does matter. Don't get over-focused on the technology. The other big mistake, uh, which is the flip side of this coin, is don't assume that we're at the end of crypto history and that what exists right now will be what exists in the future. Volumes are an excellent indication uh, of where the market's heading and, and, and how, you, how big a project is. The other metric that I would say not to discount is social metrics. We think about cryptocurrencies, they're not companies, right? They're not currencies. They're actually what they are is networks at the end of the day. The best way to evaluate a network is how many people are talking about it. It's important to think of these crypto assets as backed by technology, and each technology can be optimized to be really good at one or another thing. In the same way that Microsoft is a software company optimized to be good at one thing, and Salesforce is a software company optimized to do another thing. Crypto assets can be divided into various categories. A store of value, so a place to hold your money. They can be used in smart contracts, which is an agreement between buyer and seller. There are utility tokens. And then there's a specific subset of cryptocurrencies called stablecoins, which have a value pegged to a real world asset, such as a fiat currency like the US dollar or a commodity like gold. We're going to look at a few popular players in these categories. The Ethereum blockchain often gets described as a world supercomputer. 
Its ability to run decentralized applications and deploy smart contracts makes it favorable to developers like Austin Bunsen. So Bitcoin is like really good at this very, very one, very, very simple thing, which is like being decentralized, censorship resistant money. Um, Ethereum, on the other hand, is very focused on being a general computation platform that any developer can build on. Ethereum is growing so quickly that it received an upgrade in August 2021 to help it keep pace with miners and transactions alike. Within Ethereum, there are cryptocurrencies like Polygon, which assist with the blockchain's congestion, and Uniswap, a popular decentralized crypto exchange. There's also Polkadot, a rival to the Ethereum blockchain within the fast-growing arena of decentralized finance. Stablecoins are considered a volatile free asset because their value is connected to currencies or other reserve assets. Examples of stablecoins include USDC and Tether, both of which are pegged to the US dollar. Then there are speculative tokens built on technology that doesn't have a fundamental use case or project. The most well-known is Dogecoin, which was branded after a viral dog meme from years ago. It's important to note that the crypto industry remains rife with scams. Popular tactics include pump and dump schemes, where investors plant false news in order to push prices higher. There's also the rug pool. That's when founders abandon a project, take the money raised, and then disappear. When Wall Street institutions like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs piled into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies after years of avoiding them, the news caused crypto prices to soar. 18 months ago, this was still primarily a grassroots retail phenomenon with crypto owned mostly by individual investors. Beginning shortly after the pandemic started, beginning around May or so, we started to see institutions move into crypto in a major way. Not to be deterred, the retail investors who were drawn to meme stocks like GameStop also invested in digital currencies like Dogecoin. We had millions of customers sign up, over 3 million since the beginning of the year. Really a lot of uh, active interest uh, and growth uh, with Bitcoin and beyond. Again, lots, lots more cryptocurrencies, Polkadot being one, Ethereum uh, two, and, uh, and staking capabilities there. It's not just about trading and then buying and selling anymore. There are a lot more activities that you can take Crypto's popularity from retail investors and Wall Street has picked up the attention of government officials, making it a prime target for regulation. Conversations about crypto regulation go back as early as 2013. But governments at the time didn't really understand the technology, and the crypto market was tiny compared to now. Since then, the government's understanding of crypto has vastly improved. In July 2021, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen hinted at regulating stablecoins. Central banks see the growing asset as a threat to financial stability. Then in August 2021, SEC Chair Gary Gensler called for tougher regulation to protect investors. Uh, the regulators are probably going to get what they want in most respects. And what the regulators want, in my experience, is not to crack down and eliminate this industry, not to strangle it in its crib, but they do have strict requirements for how companies like Kraken and Coinbase and Binance and Bitstamp and Gemini and all the rest treat their customers, how we mitigate risks. I think we're going to see more development of that. Crypto projects like Ethereum and Cardano have moved to countries like Malta and Switzerland, areas with crypto-friendly regulation. Advocates warn this trend could result in the U.S. missing out on a huge opportunity. More and clearer regulation could be the single biggest driver of the next bull market of crypto. The way to evaluate whether the new regulations, which are definitely coming, are going to help or hurt crypto is this. If these new regulations put crypto on par with the traditional financial system, crypto is going to win because the underlying technology is more efficient, it's more inclusive, it's more innovative, it's newer, it's faster and better. 